Okay, now look, was that awesome or was that awesome? <laughs> That's one molecule at work. That's a single ion channel opening and closing time after time. The ion channel is the quantum unit of excitability. It's the smallest coherent unit that is responsible for the electrophysiology. The development of patch clamp recording and single channel techniques has made this into a routine investigation in many laboratories. The single channel is such an efficient enzyme that we can see it time after time, confirmation by confirmation. That current that you watched and the current that's coming out here on the recorder, I don't know if you can see it in the tape, is a current of seven picoamperes between the open and closed. That corresponds to approximately 40 million ions per second. In terms of turnover numbers, as they're usually discussed in biochemistry, that's a flux or a turnover number of four times 10 to the seventh far, far greater than any enzyme studied in solution. Because the channels are such good enzymes, we can actually record their activity in real time for time scales that range from days to uh, about 10 microseconds. In this tape, we're going to show you how to record the kinds of techniques that are required to make recordings, and a few hints about what counts and what doesn't count. What can you record single channels from? The easiest preparations are tissue cultured cells because they're not covered by connective tissue. And as we'll explain, the patch clamp requires that the electrode be very close to the cell surface. However, you can clean up tissues taken from an in vivo source by enzymatic treatment and occasionally even without any treatment whatsoever. At this point, we don't really understand what makes a good seal and not a good seal. So we're going to begin by talking about how you make a seal, what kinds of seals are possible, how to make electrodes, how to make recordings, and a little bit on how to analyze data. All right. How do you, what, how do you record single channels? The basic principle is to apply electrode to the cell surface that'll collect the current and amplify that current with a current to voltage converter. The current to voltage converter keeps the electrode basically at ground potential right here. The standard current to voltage converter uses a high resistance feedback element, 10 gig ohms to 50 gig ohms. The key to making the single channel measurement work is getting a tight seal between the membrane and this pipette. And that resistance has to be at minimal one gig ohm and preferably much higher than that. Values up to several hundred gig ohms have been obtained. The reason for that is that the dominant noise in the system is the thermal noise, the Johnson noise of this resistance, the resistance between the inside of the pipette and the outside. If you look at this figure, a 10 gig ohm resistor has a thermal noise, this is the random motion of electrons in the resistor, of approximately a quarter picoamp, peak to peak, in a one kilohertz bandwidth. Now a 100 mega ohm resistor has 10 times that value, two and a half picoamps, peak to peak. So if you're looking for a signal of one or two picoamperes, you will be covered up 
by the noise from a 100 megaohm resistor. Now, as far as the noise goes, it doesn't make any difference whether the resistance appears in the tip of the pipe pad or appears in the feedback loop because both elements contribute equally to the noise. Both elements have to be high resistance. It's easy to make the feedback resistor big just by choosing a feedback resistor. The seal to the cell is difficult to control, and we don't know what makes it good and what makes it bad. We do know, in general, that if the cell surface is dirty, or covered with connective tissue so that you can't bring the pipette close, you'll have a noisy seal. On the other hand, some cells seal under conditions where it would seem impossible. Under the scanning microscope, they would have all sorts of protrusions, and it's very surprising that they seal. So you can't predict ahead of time, either from the electron microscope appearance of the cell or any other property we know of, whether you're going, it's going to seal or not. And in fact, there's day-to-day -day variation in the tissue cultured cells as to how well they seal. This is not to say that, the, that making seals is that difficult, but the most exceptional records are still fairly far between. There are several ways to make seals against cells and they all have different advantages. Using the patch clamp technique, we can look at the outside membrane, inside membrane, look inside cells. The basic technique is as follows. Technology at its best. green pipette. This is the pipette. The pipette is brought down close to the cell. And then suction is applied to the pipette, and it draws up a little bleb of membrane into the cell. You can check the presence of this bleb by the resistance between the inside and the out, as we'll show you later. At this point, if you just record current, if a channel opens up in this membrane, a current will flow and will be recorded. The current will be driven by the difference in potential between the pipette and the cell interior. This is what's known as a cell attached configuration. At this point, it's possible to just back up the electrode and rip off this patch of membrane forming what's called either a rip-off or an inside-out patch, referring to the fact that the inside of the membrane is exposed to the outside or the, or the bath. The fact that it's exposed this way means that it's easy to control the solutions facing the intracellular surface. It's possible also to perfuse the pipette so that you get changes in the pipe, internal environment of the pipette, but that's much more difficult and much slower. These solutions can be changed in under 10 milliseconds. Now, how do you study the outside of a cell? You take your pipette, make the bleb, here's the cell out here, now pop it with a strong pulse of suction. So now you're connected to the inside of the cell. This configuration can be used to patch clamp the entire cell because you have a fairly low resistance access to the cell. Low resistance in this case meaning 3 to 10 megohms. If the cell resistance is on the order of a gigohm, then you have a reasonable voltage clamp, a passive voltage clamp. Now to look at the outside of the cell, that is to get easy access to the outside of the cell as you would want to do with ion channels activated by neurotransmitters, for example. After you have popped the patch and, and have a, an access to the inside of the cell, 
you draw the pipette back, forming a thin neck of membrane. This neck of membrane then proceeds to pinch off when you've drawn it back far enough. So that your receptors are now exposed to the bath where you can perfuse neurotransmitters or other agents that you want to work on with rapid solution changes. The inside, the cytoplasmic face of the membrane again can be changed but rather clumsily and slowly. So this would be regarded more or less as a fixed environment and the bath side as the changeable environment. This kind of a patch is called an outside out. Because the outside of the membrane, the extracellular face, is facing the outside of the pipette, facing the bath. Those are the three basic forms of the patch that we can use. So we can study the cytoplasmic face under tight solution control in a ripoff or, or an inside out patch. We can look at a cell attached patch where the normal cell interior is, is, the, is the milieu under study. And we can study the extracellular surface with high degree of control in an outside out patch. Now let's take a look at how you actually do the recording. The first thing we're going to do is take a look at making pipettes. The main requirement for a reasonable patch pipette is just that the tip be fairly small, that's in the range of half a micron to two microns. And the taper be fairly steep so that bubbles don't get trapped in the tip. We've used electrodes directly off the standard microelectrode puller. The main adjustments that are required are just to keep the heat at the minimum level that will produce a drawn electrode. We find it unnecessary to recenter the glass. And both sides are generally usable. That's it. Some more elaborate electrode pullers have the advantage of being able to shape electrode tips in particular ways or thicken glass, make thin walls out of thick walls, and provide more reproducible results. But these are not necessary for the average sort of patch clamp records. After the electrodes are made, the next step is to make the electrode both hydrophobic and thicker. The reason for this is as follows. 